I'm never going to use Create React App again. Welcome to my Vite Crash Course. You're going to learn what Vite is, how to use it, and why you need to be using it. Now it's pronounced Vite. It's a French word meaning quickly or fast. Vite is the next generation in front-end tooling. It has instant server start, lightning fast hot module replacement, rich feature support, optimized builds using rollup, universal plugins, fully typed APIs, and experimental server-side rendering. Vite was created by Evan Yu, the inventor of Vue, but this is not a Vue only tool. No, no, no. Vite can be used for React, Svelte, Lit, Vue, and vanilla JavaScript. This is going to be my new go-to development and build tool because it does it all. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Vite. These are all my personal opinions, but if you're watching Evan, if you want to give me a shout on Twitter, that'd be cool. So why do we need Vite? When I say bundler, you most likely think of Webpack, Parcel, or Rollup. The problem with these is that they have to build everything on every save. If you have a very large application, that could take several minutes every time you save. Even with hot reloading in some frameworks, the update speeds get significantly slower the larger your application gets. Let's take a look at a traditional bundle-based development server setup. We have our entry point, our possible routes, and all of our modules. All of the possibilities are all bundled together, then our development server is ready. You can easily see where the bottleneck is here. Now because of this, Vite has taken a very different approach. You might even say a completely backwards approach, but it works. Vite starts the server right away. Vite takes the dependencies that don't change often and pre-bundles them using ESBuild. The ESBuild is written in Go, which makes it up to 100 times faster than JavaScript-based bundlers. The times that you see here are how long it's taking these bundlers to bundle 10 copies of the 3JS library. The difference is amazing. Vite uses route-based code splitting to figure out what parts of the code actually need to be loaded. It does this on the fly. It doesn't have to rebundle everything. Lastly, Vite delivers the code using native ES module support in modern browsers. This lets the browser take the job of bundling in development. But for production, Vite uses Rollup to bundle, tree shake, and to implement other performance optimizations. So what about Snowpack? Snowpack is a no bundle native ESM server as well. In fact, Vite is partially inspired by Snowpack version one, but there are some key differences. Vite has multi-page support out of the box. All you have to do is add a folder with an index.html file, and there is no additional configuration needed in development. Just go to slash about and it works. To build for production, you simply need to add your additional entry points in the vite.config.js file like this. Now, another differentiator is Vite's library mode, which makes it easier to develop browser-oriented libraries. Vite also has automatic CSS code splitting. I'm going to say that again. Vite has automatic CSS code splitting. That is going to make your site so much faster. It's only going to load the CSS code needed for the specific part of the application that you're using. Vite also has optimized async chunk loading. What the heck is that? So Rollup generates common chunks, which is shared code. When you have dynamic imports, this can result in multiple network calls. As chunk A is parsed by the browser, it then realizes that it also needs chunk C. So it then has to go back out and request that. Vite rewrites this so that if chunk A is needed, it automatically sends along chunk C in parallel and even other dependencies that may be needed after chunk C, completely eliminating network round trips. Vite also has an automatic dynamic import polyfill. So there's still some disparity between browser support on ESM dynamic imports and ESM via script tags. So Vite uses a lightweight polyfill to fix this until it's worked out in all of the browsers. Vite also has a legacy mode plugin. This enables support for browsers that don't support native ES modules. And you really only need to worry about this if you have to support IE. Vite also has faster dependency pre-building. Again, it uses ES build instead of rollup for dependency pre-building and ES build is way faster. Vite has mono repo support and it has CSS pre-processor support for SAS and less. Okay, so that was a lot of talking. Let's look at some code. All right, getting a Vite project up and going is super simple. I have a blank project folder here, and in the terminal, we're going to say npm init at Vite 
vite.js slash app. Now it's going to ask us to name our project. We'll call it vite.js because we're going to select vanilla JavaScript, but we can choose between Vue, React, Preact, Lit, and Svelte. So we're going to choose vanilla and we could choose JavaScript or TypeScript. We're going to choose JavaScript. Now that's done. Let's cd into vite.js. And then we're going to do npm i to install our dependencies. Pretty quick. Now we can say npm run dev. And that's going to start our dev server. And that's already going. So let's go ahead and open this up. So here's the Vite default demo project. Let's go ahead and take a look at the files here. So if we go in and we look at the package JSON, uh, it's very simple. So we just have our name, version, and then some basic scripts. So the dev script will just run Vite. That's our dev server. The build script will run Vite build. And the serve will run Vite preview, which shows you uh, the build. And then we just have a dev dependency of Vite. Right? And then if we go into our index.html, it's a blank boilerplate with an app. And then if we go to the main JS, some HTML is being inserted into the app. We're also importing our CSS in the JavaScript here. All right, so really basic stuff. Um, let's go back and open up our terminal. Let's kill the dev server. And then we can say npm run build. And that's pretty quick. And so now we have a dist folder here with our build. And if we want to serve that, we would say npm run serve. And that's going to serve a preview on localhost 5000. So 3000 is going to be your dev server and 5000 is your preview of your build. All right, now we're going to put Vite and create React app head to head. I'm going to use Vite to create a React app and to start a dev server on the left. And then on the right, I'm going to use create React app and start the dev server. Let's see how long these take. I'm not going to speed anything up or make any cuts in the video. All right, on the left, we have Vite. So I'm going to say npm init vite.js slash app, and I'm going to use dot so that it installs in this current directory. And then I'm not going to hit enter yet and create react app. We'll say npx create react app and dot again here. All right, so I'm going to hit enter on create react app first and then on vite. So enter, enter. All right, now in vite, we need to enter our package name. So I'm going to call it vite react. Enter, we're going to choose React and we're going to choose JavaScript. All right, now that was done. So let's do npm i to install the dependencies. That's done. All right, npm run dev and our dev server is ready. Let's open it up and there we go. This is the default Vite React app. It has a built in counter. We can press this button to count pretty cool. So you can see here that there are a lot more steps to creating the app and starting the server with Vite, but it's way faster. Create React app is still running. Let's see how long this takes. All right, it has finally finished. So let's do npm start. We'll start this one up. And yes, we have something else running. Let's enter. It's going to put it on 3001 instead. And you can see it's taking it a bit to start up and it's finally running. Awesome. Okay, so now 
let's build both of these. All right, so we're going to do npm run build on both of these. All right, I'm going to hit enter on create React app and then Vite React. All right, Vite's done. And React, create React is done. All right, those were both mm, relatively quick. Of course, these are very small applications. Let's see these build sizes. All right, so let's go into Vite React. And then in here, we have our dist folder. So let's see how big this folder is. So we have 144 kilobytes is the total size of the Vite distribution folder. Let's go to Create React App. And we have our build folder for this one. So let's check it. This one is 544 kilobytes. Let's look at the total project file size. So we have our Create React app. The total size of Create React app is around 262 megabytes and 36,000 files. All right, let's look at Vite. Vite is about 44 megabytes and about 1,800 files. The differences are crazy, and the Vite example project has more functionality built into it. All right, I have the dev servers running on both of these again. Let's take a look at the hot module replacement in both of them. So we have the Create React app here. Let's make a change to it. So we're going to Source, and then let's look at App.js. And then let's go in here, and we'll say, we'll edit this right here. And let's save it and see how long it takes. All right, I'm going to hit save now. All right, so that took maybe a second, one and a half seconds, maybe. Let's move over to Vite. All right, so in Vite, let's go over to source and then app.js. And right here, hello, Vite plus React. All right, let's just add some exclamation points here. And let's see how long this takes. I'm going to hit save now. That was almost immediate. I'll time both of them in post and put the times on the screen. Now these are very small applications. Imagine the disparity in time when the size and scope of the applications are much larger. All right, so remember we have this counter here, so let's go ahead and we'll increment that to six, and then watch what happens if we edit this again and we hit save. The state remains. Now this is not a differentiator for Vite, but it comes in really handy when you want to update some styles on something like a modal, and it's not always visible. So you can open the modal, tweak your CSS, save it several times, and the modal will remain open because the state doesn't get reset. Now before we had this ability, it was easier to just go into the browser dev tools and make the CSS changes there and then copy and paste them back into VS Code, but we don't need to do that anymore. The last thing that I want to show you is how easy it is to deploy your site. There are many options for deployment, including Netlify, GitHub Pages, Firebase, Heroku, Vercel, but today we're going to use Cloudflare Pages. Here first, we'll need to push our project to GitHub. So we'll go over to GitHub, initialize repository, and let's just say first commit. And then at the bottom, if we click this little cloud, that will upload it. We'll put it into a public repository. That's fine. And there we go. So now it is in my repository under Vite-React. So now let's go over to Cloudflare Pages. All right, so then I'm at my Cloudflare dashboard. We'll go to Pages. And then here we can create a project. Then let's look right here. We have my Vite React right there. Let's select that. Begin setup, project name, that's fine. That's fine for the branch. For framework, we'll say none. And then build command, we'll say npm run build. The build directory output is dist, so that's fine. And let's save and deploy. All right, so now Cloudflare is doing its thing. It's going to build it and then deploy it. All right, there it is. Let's go ahead and open it up. This took about, mm, about a minute. And there it is. We have our Vite React app on Cloudflare Pages. And you can get to it yourself if you want, vite-react.pages.dev.
So that's going to be it for this video. Give Vite a try on your next project and let me know what you think. And use Cloudflare Pages to deploy your next project too. It's free. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. Thank you.